Welcome! In this video, we are going to talk about stress. There are a number of books covering this matter, and the recurrent definition often coming up will call it as adaptation syndrome, which is for us rather conceptual. Our definition would be more pragmatic. My level of stress is directly linked to the amount of energy I need to face a given situation. When I am saying energy, I mean either physical, for example, to cope with the very cold weather while working outside, mental, like to learn a vast amount of material for a study in a short time, or emotional, to face a personal situation involving strong emotions. From this definition, it's easy to understand that while dealing with such situations, our body and brain need a lot of rest to recover and prevent exhaustion. The quantity of energy needed to cope with it, but also the perception of this quantity of energy needed is related to several parameters. Am I equipped to deal with it, either physically, mentally or emotionally? Can I easily find options and resources to gain additional energy to cope with it or waste less energy in the process? Did I choose to confront the situation or was it imposed on me by the context? Did it appear suddenly or did I have some time to adapt, consider and cope with it? Every room, depending on its personal background, will have a different level of such specific energy. While facing what I will describe a talk situation, the body will show under the reptilian brain command a certain amount of signs. Those signs could be an increasing of breast rhythm or beats, swelling, skin becoming red, muscle tensions, body shaking, vertigos, and so on. There are three basic steps available, taking more or less time depending how well I am equipped to face the situation. The alarm phase, I use my different skin and call upon my sensations through my senses, sight, touch, smell, taste and physical sensation to reach a given outcome. The resistance phase, my adrenal gland produces cortisol, increasing my resistance and willingness to fight. The exhaustion phase, after a given variable amount of time, fatigue will show up and sometimes demotivation, diminishing tolerance, even sickness could appear. There are a number of available strategies to cope with such issues. We need to experiment in order to know which one works best for each one of us, favoriting those easy to implement or to repeat. We can act on two levels, the stressor, which is not always possible, and ourselves, so we have to find solutions to lower the impacts of such stressful situations. This will help us feel more comfortable with increasing awareness, to deal with such issues, to manage and to address them with increasing motivation or on the contrary to decide to escape or avoid them. Sometimes it's way better and safer and even wiser to escape. Sometimes involving someone else in the process by sharing what we are living helps us feeling supported and not alone. In other occasions, changing our behavior and attitude or the way we approach the situation will come in. In all cases, appropriate rest is paramount to reinstate lost energy levels. Plus, relaxation methods will help us in the recovery as well as many other advantages we will explore later. You can find on the website in the material chapter a document called List of Levels of Stress. This will help you to locate what is at any given moment your actual position on the scale. For a pilot, as for anyone else, remember that it's not the stressor which is important, it's the way we perceive it according to our emotions, feelings, competencies, hopefully giving us confidence to face and cope. As an example, if, as a pilot, I have to take a flight test or flying an unknown program in a competition, either I am confident that I have the necessary resources, mastering all the procedures and being in control of the situation with options, or I know perfectly my program, boosting my flight attitude and motivation with a lot of enthusiasm. Conversely, if I lack confidence in my resources to deal with procedures or program, then I will be in an escaping 
fly away mode, finding excuses to retract on flight or for example lacking the motivation to even walk to the plane and so on. Or I can also adopt a freezing attitude, being afraid to make an error or hesitating between several options, eventually giving up with detrimental consequences on the outcome of what I am undertaking. These three different attitudes will always come up whatever the situations, like talking in front of an agent, taking a written exam, flying in a world championship contest, or having to deal with an MHA situation in flight. The mental preparation will help you recognize what is your prevailing attitude and to change, if necessary, to a positive flight attitude. Thank you for watching. This video is also part of the Academy of Aerobatics and Aerosafety First iOS app, link in the description. Leave a like and share it if you enjoy it, comment if needed, and remember to subscribe and hit the bell button. See you very soon and happy landings!